right after I graduated high school, I took the bus down to Patterson, New Jersey, and signed, enlisted in the U.S. Army. And uh, that was the beginning of my journey. This was August 14th, 1964. Then after that, I was assigned to the 71st Artillery Regiment. After we trained for deployment to fight in, in the Cold War, said, you know, you're going to be deployed to the South Pacific. They didn't tell us where it was. We were first to get off the ship. We stopped in Queen Anne Harbor, which is central Vietnam. Tens of thousands of us landed in primitive, very primitive conditions. So you couldn't bathe, you couldn't, you know, you couldn't change your clothes or anything. The soldiers I met already had a thousand mile steroid. Right? They were already, like, they seemed like they were burned out. I, I realized I entered a different world. This was a combat zone. I was kind of, was kind of shocked. It, it's difficult for me because I, uh, after I came back, my twin brother, he was late. He couldn't, he missed the, uh, the deployment, the draft, because he had an uh, ear infection. Uh, he got drafted after I did. He was 101st Airborne Headquarters at uh, Phan Rang initially, and then during the Tet Offensive, they were shipped out to fight the conflicts in north, northern Vietnam and that were going on at Khe Sanh. They were in the Way City area, a place called Phu Bai. He went in after the Marines had won back the city, and uh, uh, yeah, he saw the whole elephant. Yeah, he had a pretty bad experience. He saw somebody, he's like, it's hard for me to talk about it. He was a lone survivor in his unit. They got hit. Camp Eagle, he was on the bunker line. It's pretty bad. It was pretty bad. He, he had to deal with it for years. And uh, I tried to help him. Eventually, when he came back, he became very disturbed, became mentally ill about it. The environment in the United States in the 60s, late 60s, was very anti-war. And you could feel it in the air. We just never talked about it. It was very painful. So I just didn't, I just got into my thing. The other veterans I knew were very depressed about it. You know, they had saw a lot, and they came back, and they felt like they were betrayed, and they felt uh, that they did their duty, and this is what they get for it. And they, they succumbed to alcohol and drugs in many cases. Ultimately, I ended up doing my fellowship at a VA hospital. So in the late 70s, after I got my doctorate degree, I just saw so many things. I was trying to, I was interested to figure out why people behaved they did on both sides. It wasn't called PTSD back, back then. It was called stress disorders. It wasn't well defined. That's how I, I got into it, and it's where my journey eventually led to. Well, as I mentioned, when I first got to Vietnam, I realized this is serious. This is going to this is going to be a really dangerous place. My unit was pretty lucky, but we had firefights. We had our camp. You know, we had attacks. We had sniper fire. You developed this fear of death, basically, is what it is. And uh, it does come back. And you try to what we do in the military. You learn to control the fear so you can function. And that's been helpful. And then what I noticed with my brother and others, uh, they can't control the fear. And it controls them. That's a, it's a natural response, and that's the issue. My theory, it's a fear of death that you have. And unless you can control that, they're gonna develop that PTSD response. About 15 years or so before he died, I, I got him to go to the VA hospital. He got into treatment, and he did recover to a degree, but he was never really normal. So it was also part of my motivation to try to uh, make a difference. I couldn't help him, but I spent a lot of my life and career helping veterans and doing my research. I'm a researcher, I'm not a clinician, doing research. So I did this, so I studied for years because I was spending time in VA hospital, working with vets, and then I, I was a patient myself in the VA hospital. And I noticed all Vietnam veterans who had PTSD were all heavy smokers. Well, there's something going on there. It's more than self-medication, and sure enough, when I got to Geisinger, we looked at that. We found that they had a receptor, they had a nicotinergic receptor, alpha-5, that was the first time, it was the first discovery that associated that nicotine receptor with PTSD. It was our study that we did, it was published a few years ago. And it turns out that, that regulates a fear center in the brain, the amygdala. And what you notice with people, they develop agoraphobia. They can't go outside to sedate themselves. They just become very isolated. They have a lot of anxiety disorders and just becomes very generalized. And they become very disabled. And that's what happened to him. And people that can't control that, whether they were in the World Trade Center or Hurricane Sandy, whatever the case may be, they, they have that fear response. And it, unless it's controlled and treated, you, you're gonna have pro you could have problems with it. Because you're dealing with this part of the brain that controls the anxiety center. And it, what, what happens when people do narcotics? It, 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 it calms them down. They reduce their anxiety. They didn't use alcohol and drugs to control their anxiety levels. So if you find, quote unquote, an answer to PTSD, you find an answer to addiction.